Hi everyone, I am Dr. Noraj Thakur, Associate Professor and Head of the Department of English Business College. Uh, today, I am going to talk to you about uh, William Butler Yeats's poem, The Lake Isle of Innisfree. Uh, this uh, poem is obviously a nature poem uh, in the line uh, with uh, the romantic, English romantics, William Wordsworth, Shelley, uh, kids and in his poem W.B. Yeats uh, carried the tradition of the English Romantics. It's a very simple poem, apparently it consists of only 12, 12 lines and uh, this uh, apparent simplicity of the poem uh, uh, sometimes uh, deceives us uh, because we can uh, go into uh, the life of uh, the poet William Butler Yeats, as well as his uh, uh, political concerns uh, during the time when the poem uh, was written. The poem was uh, written in the late uh, 1890s uh, when Ireland was uh, under British rule. Uh, let us begin with the poem. I will arise and go now and go to Innisfree, and a small cabin built there of clay and wattles made. Nine wind rows will I have dear, a high for the honey bee, and live alone in the bee loud glad. Here I is uh, the poet narrator, the poet persona, and he says that uh, he will move to certain places. He'll move to uh, Innisfree. And uh, in the in the in a third stanza of the poem, we have been told that the speaker is uh, in a in a city. The speaker is in a uh, city. The line while I stand on the roadway or on the pavement, gray. So roadway and gray pavements uh, refer to the fact that the poet is at the moment uh, in, in in a city, and so obviously. Although the city life is absent the poem, and as it is in the background, we have been uh, introduced to two worlds. One world is the world of Nasser, uh, who is uh, the poet uh, longs to go back to, and the another is the present world in which he lives. Uh, so as we read about the poet William Butler Yeats, we come to learn that uh, although he was born in Dublin, he moved to London and very often he used to travel to his maternal uncle's house uh, located in Lathgill, that is in Sligo. And he had very sweet memories pertaining to that place. So obviously uh, this Inispe, uh, which is referred to in the poem is a place is a real place, and at the same time, it may refer to a place uh, of his heart's desire, but it's a place located in uh, Sligo, Love Gill, where he had very, uh, where he had spent uh, many uh, sweet uh, moments. And now he is in a, in, a, in a city, and perhaps he is uh, frustrated with uh, city life. Uh, just as William Wordsworth in most of his poems uh, uh, shows his uh, apparent uh, dislike, his apparent uh, dissatisfaction with his city life. Uh, uh, in his poem also, the poet uh, expresses uh, his his disappointment, his frustration with his life, which is also which is in the background of the poem, which uh, which is uh, not. Uh, uh, according to the poem, but uh, uh, it, it might be because of his frustration, his disappointment in his life that he uh, dislikes the city life and wants to escape from it. And that's why in a very first line, uh, which immediately he tells us uh, that he will not stay anymore in the city and he will uh, arise and go to NSP. Uh, but it's not probable, it's not possible on his part to go back to NSP and to and and to uh, taste uh, the the kind of experiences he had earlier when he was a young boy when he used to travel to uh, 
in its free. Uh, however, uh, this journey which we have been told uh, in the very first line of the poem is not a physical journey, it also refers to uh, uh, a spiritual journey. Uh, so uh, this is another layer of the poem uh, that the poem is about uh, a spiritual journey which the poet uh, 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 undertakes. Uh, it's a spiritual journey and it's an emotional journey for the, for the poet. Uh, so the first line he says that he will he will not stay back anymore in 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 city and he will leave city and he will uh, live a very simple life amidst nature and that is why he expresses his uh, earnest desire to go back to Inispi where he had uh, spent considerable moment of his life and he says that he will uh, live a very simple life and he will build a, a cabin there. And quite interestingly, the cabin, he speaks of a cabin, that's a cottage, a hut, who is, is in sharp contrast with the sky kissing, towering buildings located in the cities. Uh, so he will uh, build a very small house and he will, uh, uh, he will grow vegetables there, uh, vegetables like bean. He says that there he will plant nine bean rows. So it's an image of uh, bean, uh, uh, growing bean and uh, there will be of course vegetables and uh, he will live a very natural life amidst all this and he also speaks about um, he will rear a bee honey bee particularly honey bee uh, and uh, he says that he will live there alone in the bee loud lead in the open space which is made loud by the humming sounds of the bees so obviously in the past ten we have been transported uh, by the poet and the poet himself also uh, through his mind's eye uh, uh, gets transported to a very beautiful world, a natural world where he will live uh, in a very small cottage uh, and which will uh, build with uh, clay and, and other materials which are available uh, from nature. He will plant vegetables, he will have high, he will have beehive there and he will uh, live alone, all alone, like a hermit. So uh, this uh, living alone also reminds us of, or it also makes us think that perhaps he, he is speaking about a spiritual journey, uh, spiritual journey, which is in sharp contrast with the materialist world, materialist world he is uh, living in the, in, the, in the city. In the second stanza, he speaks about peace, how contrary to uh, the city life, Peace is available in Inispri, and I shall have some peace there. The peace comes dropping slow, dropping from the hills of morning to where the cricket sings. Here, midnight all a glimmer and noon a purple glow, and evening full of the lineage's wings. Uh, so he also uh, gives a very vivid picture, a natural picture of Inispri uh, through uh, these four lines, and he says that this is a peaceful place. It's a calm and tranquil place, and he will get peace uh, there uh, because he says that peace comes very slowly, very gradually in in his way, and peace comes uh, from from the morning, from the morning when mist cover the meadows, and uh, there will be peace all around, all around, and even uh, evenings. Evenings were also very beautiful. Uh, evenings were full of crickets' wings. Uh, cricket sings and then midnight is also not uh, uh, altogether dark. There are, there are glimmering uh, light in the midnight and noon is uh, noon is uh, a purple glow. It reminds us of uh, a very beautiful sky where it's uh, where it is free from any kind of uh, dark clouds. And evenings of Inispi will also be very beautiful where there will be uh, linnets. So this is a natural wall, uh, full, uh, full of, uh, full of peace, uh, where you will get peace from the from the crickets, from the from the linnets, and particularly the environment, the beautiful environment in the morning, at night, and even even in the evening. And so it is his heart's desire to go back uh, to 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 the place uh, and to live a very a very quiet life, happy life amidst uh, the beauty of Innisfree. Uh, in the third 
uh, stanza there is the repetition uh, of uh, first line i will arise and go now for always night and day i hear lake water lapping with low sounds by the true shore while i stand on the roadway or on the pavement's gray i hear it the deep heart's core uh, in the first uh, part of the uh, first part of the first uh, line i will arise and go now for always so he here uh, tries to give us reason why he uh, wants to leave uh, uh, the city and why he wants to go back to Inispi. He, he says, I'll arise and go now. He, he, he speaks about his immediacy, the urgency uh, which is required uh, because he, uh, he has, he has uh, no interest in living in the city anymore. And he, he gives us some reason why he wants to escape to uh, the Inispi. He says that I uh, hear lake water lapping with low, sound, low sounds by the shore. So he uh, speaks about his uh, intense desire of going back to the place because all the time uh, he hears uh, he hears the sweet sound, uh, the sweet sound of lake water dashing against uh, the waves, and this low sound uh, is still haunting him all the time. Just as uh, in William Wallace's poem *Tintern um, Abbey*, uh, the sounding cataract haunted the poet all the time. So also. Uh, the 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 lapping sound of uh, Lake Isle, the lapping sound of the lake uh, situated in the NSP was haunting all the time. And while he stands uh, in the city, he can uh, hear the sweet murmuring sound of the lake. So while I stand on the roadway, so even though he is standing on the roadway or in gay pavements in London, in London or in a, in a metropolitan city. He uh, could hear the sweet, the murmuring sound, the lapping sound of uh, the the lake, the lake uh, of uh, in his fee. and so he he could he loved the place, he loved the sound from the deep of from the deep from the depth of his uh, heart. So this is a very simple poem. It's obviously a Nisher poem, and it's in line with the English, in the line with English uh, romantic uh, poems like William Wordsworth's *Tin Turn Away*, uh, the lines written in early spring. Uh, the world is too much, too, too much with uh, us. Where William Wordsworth uh, urges uh, people to love nature, to live amidst nature, um, to uh, to love nature, and he even. Uh, urges his sister Dorothy to love Nessar because the Nessar would never betray us, he tells uh, his sister Dorothy. And in a similar way, uh, it seems that W.B. Yeats uh, is uh, continuing with the tradition of the English romantics uh, and, uh, uh, and being away uh, from uh, his uh, uh, apparent mysticism and uh, occultism, which uh, characterize uh, many of his poems. Uh, um, uh, if we if we just uh, take uh, his another poem, for example, uh, Easter uh, 1916, where he uh, makes use of uh, ideas, history, and politics in order to comment on some more serious topics. In this poem, he only speaks about uh, his uh, his his dislike for uh, city life and his desire to go back uh, to a uh, to a place, uh, to a place uh, who is uh, he 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 longed, uh, which he longed for, uh, because he wanted to go back uh, to that place because he lived here, uh, and the memory of the place uh, is still haunting him. Uh, so uh, it, it's a it's a poet about nature. It's a poem about nature number one, and it's it's a poem where he describes his spiritual journey uh, because he loves to live all alone like a hermit, as he as he, as he, as he uh, uh, says in 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 stanza three of the poem. And there is of course uh, although very implicitly there is a political implication of the poem because because uh, the poem was written at a time when. Ireland was under British rule, and uh, when uh, the people from Ireland, people from Ireland, um, travel to America, travel to United Kingdom, and uh, many other countries, and Irish people were not even not even re regarded as far equal to the others, and that is why the poem, the poet also uh, wants to uh, wants to think about uh, the political 
uh, condition of the time and he wants to 